Today, I'm going to be reading Paris Hilton's chart. Hello and welcome, or welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Nina. I am a Western tropical astrologer who has been studying astrology since 2014 and reading professionally since 2017. And today I want to do a video unlike anything that I've done on this channel before, but I am really, really excited to film this video. So I watched the Paris Hilton documentary on YouTube, This Is Paris, and I didn't expect it to affect me as much as it did. I didn't expect it to have as much of an impact as it did on me. And it's a really interesting documentary because it really is a psychological portrait of Paris Hilton beyond anything that we've ever seen of her before in the public eye. And I will admit that I have not followed Paris Hilton's career pretty much in the slightest. It wasn't even my idea to watch this documentary, but as I was watching it, it was uh, really impactful for me. And Paris Hilton's birth chart is available on Astro Theme, uh, birth time included. That's a great thing about Astro Theme is that it has a really big database of a celebrity's full birth charts. And as I was watching the documentary and she would say something, I would reference her birth chart and see like, where is that coming from? Or, oh, how does this relate to her birth chart? And I figured basically since I was doing it on my own, I would basically read to you guys Paris Hilton birth chart for you to get some insight either if you're super interested in Paris Hilton and her birth chart or if you're interested in how to read a natal chart in its entirety because on this channel we do you know separate placements and we have not looked at a completely integrated chart maybe you have similar placements to Paris maybe you have a similar chart in general to Paris and yeah let's just get right into it so the things to me that stood out in the documentary are Paris Hilton's um, sense of identity sense of self uh, her relationship to work and money, her relationship to her brand, obviously her trauma and her nightmares and where that might show up in her chart, and her relationship to her family as well is pretty interesting. Now if you want to pull up her chart and follow along with me on Astro Theme, you can do that, but let me give you a bit of a rundown on what we're going to talk about and how this speaks to the things brought up in her documentary. So Paris Hilton is a Sagittarius rising with Neptune in the first house, uh, just about conjunct her ascendant. She has an intercepted sun in Aquarius and an intercepted moon in Leo in houses two and eight respectively. She also has her Mercury and her Venus intercepted in the second house in Aquarius. And she has a Scorpio ruled 12th house with Uranus in the 12th house. And she also has a Libra midheaven with Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto in her 10th house. This is all super, super interesting. Let's start off with Paris's identity and sense of self. So you'll notice in the documentary that Paris has a really hard time rooting into who she feels like she really is. She often brings up that she has this character and that she has this brand and that it's almost difficult for her to drop that and be her authentic self. Now, this is coming through with her intercepted sun and her Neptune in the first house. What's super interesting about her Neptune in the first house is that she even says in the documentary that I think her grandmother would compare her to Grace Kelly and Marilyn Monroe and kind of put these images on her and almost like this expectation or this desire to live up to this glamorous and perfect kind of human being. And Marilyn Monroe also has Neptune in the first house. With Neptune in the first house, people will often paint on you the identity that they want to perceive you as. You can see this a lot with Marilyn Monroe. People see what they want to see when Neptune is in the first house. And that can be really difficult when it comes to owning your own sense of identity because 
people are telling you different things about yourself. People are painting different images on you that it's hard for you to grasp your own sense of identity. I have a whole series on the ascendant and descendant and what that means, but the ascendant is often gifted to us and it's our identity that is informed by how other people treat us. So when other people have really high or dreamy expectations of you, it's hard for you to form a cohesive and rooted sense of identity, which can often be the case with Neptune in the first house. And this is exacerbated with Paris Hilton because she has her son intercepted. And having her son intercepted is bringing home the same theme of not being able to root down in and understand who she is. And we know a little bit about Paris's upbringing and the fact that she, in her experience, definitely believes that she existed to fulfill and live out the expectations of her family and her parents and that her own self-interest was not taken into consideration like her going to etiquette classes and whatnot and not being able to really be herself and she even explains that she didn't feel like she was herself until she found the club scene and the party scene. So having her son intercepted means that she has a hard time feeling like she can take up space and that she can own who she is or that she even knows who she is. And obviously with that Neptune in the first house, she's getting mixed messages on what her identity is and other people are painting different pictures on her and creating different expectations for her and who they think that she should be or maybe even that she is and it's hard for her with her own two hands to grasp who she feels like she is. On top of that, she has Mercury intercepted and it's brought up a lot in this documentary that Paris is actually very smart. People say like, oh, she's actually very smart and that is not reflected in her brand of this ditzy blonde girl. And what's also interesting is that the example that one of the girls um, in the later part of the documentary from the Provo Canyon School brings up as an example to Paris's intellect is her grasp on economic theory and her Mercury and Sun are in the second house. Now, again, her son is in the second house intercepted. And a theme that we see in Paris in this documentary is that she relies on her possessions or the number in her bank account or also how much she's working, how hard she's working and how much money that she's making to feel rooted, to feel safe. And potentially looking at her chart, it could even be that she relies on money and possessions to tell her who she is. And that if she's not working, if she's not making money, she doesn't have any connection to her sense of self. And the amount of money that she has is the only thing that is boosting her sense of self, that makes her feel like someone because intercepted sons oftentimes have a hard time feeling uh, deserving of taking up space and so it could feel like she needs to work in order to even feel like a worthy person at all. She also has Venus intercepted in the second house so her sense of value is quite low or at least was not encouraged in her development. She wasn't gifted with an innate sense of self-worth. And again, it's another thing that she feels like she needs to earn. And she earns that through a very practical collection of monetary value. Um, and that therefore influences her inwardly developed sense of value.
Then she has her Libra Midheaven. Her Libra Midheaven is pretty obvious because we know her Libra Midheaven. We know her Libra Midheaven as her brand, as this, you know, typical girly marker of an archetype of beauty for the time as well. She was representing what is beautiful and she was the it girl of the early 2000s and she was the image of fashion and beauty and style that's her Libra Midheaven coming forth in her brand. On top of that, she often speaks to how her brand is built on pleasing other people. That's another place where this theme of living up to other people's expectations comes through. Libra is the sign that wants to please other people through and through. And with a Libra Midheaven, she feels like her public persona is in service of pleasing the public and doing what the public wants from her. That even means, you know, doing irresponsible things or appearing stupid, anything that makes the public satisfied because it's fulfilling almost their Neptune on the first house painting of who they believe Paris to be. And so that Libra Midheaven is really feeding into what the public wants from her. And the public doesn't always want good things from Paris. The public is more pleased when Paris fucks up almost, when Paris is her ditzy, shallow brand a lot of the time. But she also has Saturn in the first house and she has Saturn and Jupiter in the first house conjunct. And this is really interesting because actually a lot of people uh, comment on our house placement videos, what if I have Saturn and Jupiter in the same house? Because they seem to be contradicting energies to be within the same house. And oftentimes when Saturn and Jupiter are together, it means that you create abundance through hard work or potentially really difficult, challenging situations end up breeding abundance for you. So Paris works really, really hard for her money, uh, which is not something that we have always been aware of and that you might not be aware of not watching the documentary because she is an heiress, but she's also an heiress of one of the Hilton children who did not get a really big cut of the fortune. And the millions and millions of dollars that the Paris Hilton empire is built on is actually built on her hard work. And we see how she doesn't sleep, how she's always going, how she's never been on vacation. Her actual hard work is what is creating her fortune. Then she is Pluto in the 10th house as well. Pluto in the 10th house is scary uh, to a lot of people. And the way that it manifests in Paris, it seems, is first of all, definitely through the sex tape. If you have Pluto in the 10th house, it is not recommended that you do anything sneaky or that you document anything intimate if you don't want it to be seen publicly. And I'm not saying that Paris Hilton was uh, particularly being sneaky, but like Richard Nixon is an example of this. He has uh, Pluto conjunct his midheaven, and so he was being real sneaky through Watergate, and to have Pluto on his midheaven, his sneakiness and his covert, sly, uh, hidden agendas came to the forefront and ruined his career. For Paris, Pluto in this case might be representing her intimacy, her sexuality, her private sexuality, her private intimacy was documented and then was shared and became part of her public persona. On top of that, this documentary really goes into Paris's trauma and her psychological wounds. And that is another manifestation of Pluto in the 10th house in a much more empowering way, where she is displaying her trauma. She's displaying her wounds in a way that hopefully is healing to her, but can also be very beneficial to the viewer, potentially watching and having experienced something like her, but also to understand a deeper part of Paris. So 
With Pluto in the 10th house, essentially, we are very intimately acquainted with Paris through the sex tape and through this documentary, although in very different ways. Um, of course, it's not the first thing that we recognize about Paris's public persona. It's the last planet in her 10th house. First, we come across that Libra midheaven, which is that it girl, people pleasing midheaven. And then we see the Saturn and the Jupiter, you know, the businesswoman in her and the abundance of money that she has. And we see in Paris's chart that money and work are extremely important pillars in her life. When we look at her second house ruled by Capricorn, her sixth house ruled by Taurus, and that Saturn in the 10th house, there's so much earth energy in her three houses that represent work, career and money. With Saturn in the 10th house, there is a lot of expectation for success, a lot of expectation for creating a sense of status. There's also a really harsh public view towards people who have Saturn in the 10th house because there is such a high expectation to live up to. And with Saturn in the 10th house, you really need to prove through your work ethic that you are worthy of being in the position that you are, which is a hard thing to live up to and that Paris has not always had the best luck in living up to. A lot of people will criticize her for being famous for her sex tape, for being famous for being an heiress, even though it is not that uncommon, especially nowadays, to be famous or have a career built on essentially being an influencer. But she's faced a lot of harsh criticism for it. Kim Kardashian also has this placement and she's also faced a lot of harsh criticism and had her work ethic questioned. Because Saturn in the 10th house has a lot to prove, has really high expectations to live up to. Then we have that second house. It's ruled by Capricorn, um, and then it's got her intercepted Venus, Sun, and Mercury there. A Capricorn ruled second house means that your sense of value has everything to do with your status or your work ethic, um, with how successful you are, which we see is very prevalent in Paris's psychology. And then again, intercepted Venus, Sun, and Mercury. Her only source of sense of self with that intercepted sun is through her monetary value, is through her possessions, is through her making money. That Capricorn second house says that you are only valuable if you are grinding, if you have a work ethic, and if you're making money and creating status and success, because it's not really all that much about money. Paris brings up in the documentary that she won't rest until she makes a billion dollars. And it's not that she needs a billion dollars, but it's to be a billionaire. It's that Capricorn relationship to success and status that comes out of it. Plus, her sense of self is dependent on it. Her sense of value is dependent on it. And her Mercury is intercepted because people uh, discount her intelligence, but at the same time, her Mercury is conjunct her sun. And her intelligence is actually a big part of her sense of self. Her sense of self is based off of her intelligence. However, her intelligence and her sense of self, her sense of individuality, have been crushed and demeaned and stunted and repressed. And there's an argument to be made looking at her chart that these things have been stunted and repressed because her parents have a self interest. Her mom in particular, her moon is not in a healthy placement at all, intercepted in Leo in the eighth house. To have her moon intercepted is showing that she did not receive the nurturing that was necessary for her from her mother or from her family in general. The fact that it's in Leo says that potentially that lack of nurturing came from her mother's own self-interest, from her mother's potential narcissism, though I'm not diagnosing anyone. I don't have the means to do that at all. A lot of people in the comments of that video do not have nice things to say about her mother though, and a lot of people do call her a narcissist. <laughs> 
There's also wounds definitely and trauma that affected her relationship with her mother and her father because her sun and moon are intercepted. But with her mother especially because it's intercepted in the eighth house and the moon in the eighth house is showing a lot of emotional trauma. Trauma that she probably has not addressed for a really long time because she has trouble accessing her emotions. She has trouble tapping into that side of herself because that side of herself was not nurtured. She was not nurtured in the way to accept and deal with her emotions. Her emotions were pushed to the side and made to be ignored. And so her emotions, her moon is sitting intercepted in the eighth house in this extremely uh, dark, traumatic and difficult position. And she doesn't have the tools to access it, to access her emotions and to work through her emotions. On top of that, her north node is conjunct her moon in the eighth house. The north node is a node that has everything to do with our discomfort zone. Our south node is our comfort zone. It's what we're familiar with. The north node is the unfamiliar that we are destined to move towards, but that there's a lot of fear and discomfort surrounding. So with it being in the eighth house, it is very uncomfortable for Paris to address her trauma and it's a lifelong journey that she has to be on to uh, actually get in touch with who she is on a deep, vulnerable, intimate level. And with it conjunct her moon, it's also very hard for Paris to get acquainted with her emotions and that's exacerbated by the fact that her moon is intercepted. On top of that, you know, her eighth house is ruled by by cancer. So there's a lot of moon energy going on in her eighth house. So that shows a real trauma surrounding her maternal figure and a difficulty with trust uh, and a difficulty with opening up and being vulnerable. And along with that, that intercepted moon is also showing a difficulty with her ability to nurture. She didn't receive a lot of nurture growing up. And so you see now at 39, she doesn't have kids and she does show this, you know, desire to one day have kids, albeit in a somewhat uh, immature and half-baked way saying that she wants to have a daughter to name her London and I don't mean to rag on that but you see that her issue with being able to feel like she's ready to be a mother at this point is that her focus is somewhere else. It's in her career and it's in making money and it's in herself because again Sun in the first house is showing that her desire for money is to fuel her sense of self or not even just fuel her sense of self but to be able to attain a sense of self a sense of worthiness and a sense of value her south node is also in the second house so clinging to objects and to material possessions is sort of a security blanket for her. It is a comfort zone for her. And people with South Node in the second house can have a really hard time with sharing or can have a sense of clinginess or even a problem with hoarding because there is this sense of safety and security and comfort when it comes to obtaining and having material possessions. And the normal North node which they're supposed to be moving to is about being able to give that up and in every single way be able to be vulnerable but going back to that intercepted moon and the issues with nurturing that Paris has from that again she is second house focused she is self focused and that is largely to do with the fact that she has a difficulty taking on this nurturing maternal role because she didn't have a maternal role model or a nurturing role model or an experience with a healthy amount or necessary amount of nurturing for her in her life. Then, you know, I guess the last thing to touch on is that 12th house in Scorpio. So the 12th house has everything to do with the subconscious and it is the sign that rules dreams because uh, dreams have to do with the subconscious and Paris often brings up the nightmares that she has which 
are, and I'm not a doctor, but are likely uh, PTSD related. With Scorpio in the 12th house, what she's holding in her subconscious is trauma. She's not addressing it and bringing it to the forefront, except maybe now, and that's coming through with her Pluto in the 10th house. But that Pluto in the 10th house is actually not the most intuitive way to address your trauma because she's putting it out to the public and sharing it openly to the public before she's actually been able to grasp it and understand it on her own terms first and bring it to the forefront of her mind first before she brings it to the forefront of the public's mind. And it seems to be the fact that that is the way that she needs to deal with her trauma by opening up and sharing it because her Pluto is in the 10th house and that's the way that she can act Access Scorpio energy because Scorpio is kind of trapped in her 12th house, although it is ruling the 11th house as well. But yeah, having that Scorpio rule 12th house means that there are deep psychological issues hidden in her subconscious that she's not addressing in her awakened mind and therefore they're coming through in her dreams and it wouldn't surprise me if these dreams were extremely violent or if they were scary and dark and i think that she mentions that her dreams often have to do with when she was essentially kidnapped to be taken to uh her emotional growth school against her will and Scorpio makes a lot of sense and that's a scorpionic theme because it is a lack of control, a giving up yourself. She's surrendering her power. She's not able to exercise her power because she is essentially being abused and overtaken by these more powerful men, forces, beings in her dream and she's likely feeling a sense of powerlessness as she's dreaming this dream. And obviously with Uranus also in the 12th house, she has a very chaotic, inconsistent dream life or subconscious. She has a very chaotic subconscious mind. Now what struck me about what was discussed in the documentary as an astrologer is that she has such a hard time with her dream life and her subconscious and she has these traumatic dreams, but she felt the most at home and herself in the party scene, going out to clubs. And that's interesting as an astrologer because both of those things have to do with the 12th house with Pisces with Neptune. And there's a couple of things that her chart might indicate as to why both of those things are true. So obviously it's true what I said about that Scorpio ruled 12th house and that uh, Uranus in the 12th house with this chaotic, erratic, violent PTSD experience of her subconscious in her dreams. But also, you know, her identity is largely rooted on this Neptune in the first house. So I talked at the beginning about how Neptune in the first house can manifest itself as other people painting your identity onto you and you not having a grasp on your identity and people seeing what they want to see when they look at you. Because Neptune rules illusions. Your sense of identity can be an illusion. But along with illusions, uh, Neptune therefore also rules mind-altering substances. So she might feel much more empowered and in touch with her identity when she is taking mind-altering substances like alcohol or I don't know what else she might have been dabbling in in the party scene, but just going out and drinking may be something that makes someone feel more themselves when they have Neptune in the first house. And on top of that, it's all Sagittarius. Sagittarius rising, Sagittarius Neptune. Sagittarius is all about excess and a fun, free-spirited nature. So Paris may feel more herself when she's in an environment where she can be more fun, free-spirited, and free in general. And that's what, you know, the club scene, the party scene might have been to her, a place where she could feel free. Of course, there is that danger of if your Neptune in the first house is dictating your sense of identity and 
you feel more yourself when you are consuming mind-altering substances that you can go down a dark path but she has so much drive with that Sun, Venus, Mercury in the second house and that Saturn and Jupiter in the 10th house that even if she were to go to these emotional growth schools, I don't think that she would have gone down the path of just being a alcoholic addict party person. Like she has the drive to have success. And I think it was especially important for her to find this environment where she could be free spirited and carefree when she was in school because she has Mars in the third house. And the third house does have to do with lower education. And to have Mars there, a typical interpretation is that either you are the bully or you will be bullied. You will experience a certain amount of violence, even if it's only through sports in your community and your lower education. With her Mars in Pisces and having her Mars not necessarily be like a, a prominent planet in her birth chart, I wouldn't peg her as the bully. So it makes sense that she says that she was uh, picked on and bullied when she was in school. On top of that, she has Mars in Pisces in the third house and her fourth house is uh, ruled by Aries and it's empty. So it's just Aries in the fourth house. And they said in the documentary that their family swept a lot of things under the rug and kept the kids in the dark and weren't honest with them. Uh, and there are a couple of interpretations with Aries in the fourth house. Sometimes Aries in the fourth house is an indication that there was violence in the home. That could possibly be true, especially, you know, when you take into consideration her experiencing violence and abuse in a boarding school situation. Because then she has Mars in the third house and a Mars ruled sign in the fourth house. And so she can be experiencing uh, violence in her lower education in her school and in her home. And if those two things are the same thing, it makes sense. But also, just in terms of her family dynamic, that Aries I see really brings home the fact that Paris seems to be completely alone or feel completely alone. Uh, she doesn't have parental attachments that are very strong at all with that intercepted sun and moon. And then Aries is all about the individual and looking out for oneself. And with that in the fourth house, it seems uh, very clear that Paris felt like she had to look out for herself in her family home. Her moon is intercepted. She wasn't receiving the nurturing that she needed. And then Aries in the fourth house. She needs to look out for herself and no one is essentially there to nurture her and take care of her. But that's all I'm going to talk about today as far as Paris's birth chart because I'm sure that this video is super, super long already. I hope that this was beneficial for you or at least entertaining for you. I wasn't taking really any notes, so it might have been all over the place, um, but I hope that you gained something from this video. Let me know if you did. Let me know if you like this video style of me reading celebrities' birth charts. Let me know if you'd be interested in me reading a specific celebrity's birth chart or if you have any insights yourself on Paris's birth chart. But that's all from me for today. I hope that you have a great rest of your day or night and thank you for watching. Bye.